this year. We um, start at a basic level of tricks in second grade and uh, move up as they get older. And um, I won't really make you jump rope. I did want to, <laughs> but they said I, wouldn't, I couldn't do that to you. So we won't make you jump. But I do want you to know that these kids will make these tricks look incredibly easy. And just the most basic trick um, is actually quite difficult for someone that, that's not in good practice. So at this time, I'm going to introduce to you our four jumpers that we brought from our 125, our group of 125. And I'm going to move this out of the way. We have uh, Rachel and Ryan Erdman. Rachel's in fourth grade. Brian is in fifth grade. Both of them have been with our program since second grade. And then we have uh, Jessica and Jack Erickson. Jessica's in third grade. Jack is in fifth grade. Uh, Jessica's mom is one of my go-to moms. She comes to all of our practices. And Jessica's actually been jumping with us since first grade because she's been hanging out in the gym with us. So. Um, normally we jump to some music, but tonight we're just going to announce our tricks that, and uh, kind of explain them to you. We're going to start with some basic tricks, just the uh, side swing jump. This is one of our very basic tricks, so go ahead, guys. We're going to swing the rope to the side and jump. And then we're going to do a side swing cross, which is just a little bit harder. They have to jump through a crossed arm. And then once they get used to that jumping through a crossed arm, then we do a front cross. Okay, and now uh, Ryan, Jessica, and Jack are going to um, do a side swing double under. They're going to swing to the side and swing and jump the rope two, with uh, two swings under one jump. And then they're going to do a double under. And thanks, guys. Now we're going to have Jessica and Jack. Uh, they're going to do the leg over. Go ahead when you're ready, guys. And again, they make this look incredibly easy, like effortless. <laughs> but <laughs> they go over one leg over the whole body. All right, thank you. Now we have Rachel and Ryan are going to do a cross-cross, which takes, is, takes the front cross and is a little bit more difficult. So when you're ready. Okay, and now Rachel, Ryan, Jessica, and Jack are going to do a series of our fancy foot tricks. Um, we're going to start with an easier one. This one's called the fling. Go ahead when you're ready. And then the Irish fling, which just takes a couple extra steps. And then uh, we're going to show you a continuous toe touch which is just a series of touches with the toes around the body. All right, thank you guys. Uh, Rachel and Jack are going to demonstrate a 360 twist. They're going to work around in a circle with some uh, turns, twists, and some footwork here. And um, Ryan is going to demonstrate this really, it, now he's going to make this look so easy that people can't, they don't believe me when I tell you this is the hardest trick that, that we do. Um, it's called the triple under side swing. He's going to swing on both sides and under his feet in one jump. So whenever you're ready, Ryan. Oh, Whoa. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and he does it effortlessly. It's crazy. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, Jessica and Ryan. That's amazing. Uh, Jessica and Ryan are going to do a heel click for you. They just click their heel and land on one foot, which is amazing. All right. And then Jack, uh, he is brought back because we did this trick a few years ago and then we kind of lost it and Jack brought it back this year. This is called the mule kick. So he's gonna, he's been practicing a little bit here.
We're working on we're working on that front flip. And Rachel and Ryan are going. This is one of our partner tricks. This one's called the wheel. When you're ready, guys. We oh, we do make mistakes when we jump rope, but it's okay. We get right back out there and try again. There it is. Wow. Okay, thanks, guys. And then Jessica and Jack are going to do, this is another one of our partner tricks. It's called a 2 and 2 360. <laughs> We're used to doing this on a, a gym floor. So the carpet it may, even makes it a little more challenging, which is even more impressive. They can do this. Okay, and then our last trick uh, is called the Traveler. And it's a, a progressive trick. Normally, oh we, normally we do this with uh, five people, but we only had three or four for demonstrations tonight, so. Five. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Oh. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity oh, to show you all the things that we, oh. that we do here at Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. And I don't, I, I'm, I'm, open, I'm open if you have any questions or anything. Um, otherwise, I'll go we're going We, we, um, we have Jump Rope Club Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every, um, from October until February. We're, we're almost finished. We usually perform at, uh, at least once at Dow High and also at the Dow Corning Tennis Tournament. Um, this year, um, the tennis tournament performance won't be happening because it's this weekend and um, a lot of our families will be gone on a four-day weekend, so we're very disappointed about that. Um, but they put in a lot of time, and I can tell you that they put a lot of extra time. They put in time on the playground, they put in time on the summers, and um, like the mule kick, Jack, he did that one on his own. That, that wasn't one that we were necessarily doing during Jump Rope Club, so That's yeah. Cool. So a lot Amazing. of extra time coming in early, and yep. they're just, yep. yeah. And, and then we the do, the, like I said, we do the performances, and we get asked to do different performances, and we have to be very careful where we go because we are 125 strong, yeah. so it's a logistical thing. Wow. Um, we have yeah. to be able to help all our parents and because they can't drive themselves to these events. So That's amazing. Yeah. I've got one thing. I'm excited about the data that you're talking about collecting. Yeah. Um, we worked on a youth master plan for Midland County a couple years ago, and I remember we went to Diane Sugna and track down presidential or right. data because that's the only data we had to look at our kids and how our kids are doing. And now you're going to have something so much better. It, yeah. And I'm excited about that. As I said, this is our, we're just implementing and I know that there are just so many things that we're going to be able to do with that program and um, I already have a few ideas but I wanted to get let Tracy catch her breath and then I've got a couple <laughs> more things for her to help us with. And um, yeah, it's exciting, really exciting. And um, you know, right now it's just a matter of learning the logistics of putting in data, and um, working with the new teacher access center. And as we go, it's just going to get better and better. So we are really excited about it. And it's cheaper than what we've done for mm -hmm. years. So we're excited about that part too. <laughs> now, did you say all the grades participate in the MPS Strong? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. It's it's it is available K K through five for fitness testing. Yep. So. I would just say, I, I know usually when you ask students what some of their favorite subjects are, it's gym and recess, at least it was with mine. <laughs> and I'm sure it is with some of you too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's exciting to see how it's evolving. Yes. It, you know, we've watched many gym classes over the years. We remember gym class. You have a lot more fun than I remember. <laughs> and I loved a jump rope, jump rope, but I never came close to that. Tell me, and I was going to ask the kids, yeah. what is your favorite part of jump rope club? Is there is there something that you really like or that you, you tell your friends so that they'll get involved? Um, performing. Learning the tricks. 
doing double unders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like performing. You do performing very, is fun. You do a very good job yeah. of that. Thank you for sharing with us. They, they, all that hard work, and they, they get to perform twice, you know. And these, well, and these four did get to do the extra special performance. Last year we got invited to come and do a, a teaching opportunity at um, the library, you know, and we went out there and we had, we had a ball with that. So if things like that kind of come up, then we, we take advantage of those opportunities. But other than that, it's just our, our Dow High and our Tennis Center performances that they work so hard for those two, two or three times. So. And we do have fun every morning. I, I would show you a video of what, what it looks like, but it might frighten you. So <laughs> I decided not to include that video <laughs> to see what our gym looks like every morning. Uh, pretty crazy. Well, I'll make the last comment. A, I'm really sad the Tennis Center thing isn't happening because that is such a magnificent performance out on those courts and all those kids. And Sorry, guys. Yeah. It, it didn't work out. Um, but I'll I tell you what I was impressed with. Forget all the tricks. You guys weren't huffing and puffing yeah. at yeah. all. Your mouths were closed. You were breathing your nose. I, you weren't even working. <laughs> I was so impressed. You're in such good shape. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. And I will not try that at home. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get hurt. Our second presentation is Jefferson Middle School, and Mr. Poole will start that off. students before you leave make sure when you get to Jefferson Mr. Troll said he can do that mule kick oh. <laughs> in the hallways we want to see that when you get to Jefferson Middle School great job thank you for asking uh, me to come tonight and uh, speak about some Jefferson students we were Mr. Troll and I were really thinking about what we would do and, and one of the things we were able to see last week was our Young Entrepreneurs Academy uh, which is something that is a partnership slash community involvement that uh, we get to use Northwood. Uh, we get to use our, our uh, great Chamber of Commerce. And uh, Tina Lynch will be coming up here to talk about it soon. Uh, we went last week and, and listened to a CEO question and answer session at uh, Griswold Auditorium. And it was fantastic to hear our students. And they're not just Jefferson students. They're Northeast students, Middle High and Dow High, I believe, which I'm sure Tina will talk about. Uh, asking our local CEO some questions about, you know, ethics and what it takes to build a successful uh, business. And all of our students have enterprises uh, that they're hoping to get started. And uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce the seven. Uh, and I know that they're gonna come up with Tina probably uh, after she gives uh, a little summary of the program. Lily Baker, Riley Davis, Jeremiah Drabic, Matthew Lamming, Garrett Brillhart, Adi Middaw and Colin Witt are the seven Jefferson students. And again, I'm gonna let Tina explain the program to you a little bit, and uh, we're gonna hopefully let the students explain their projects or what their business is going to be. And uh, hopefully if you have any questions, they will answer them fully. So Tina, I will turn it over to you. Good evening. <laughs> Thanks for having me here tonight. Uh, my name is Tina Lynch. I'm with Midland Area Chamber of Commerce, and I'm the program manager for the Young Entrepreneurs Academy. Uh, this is a new endeavor that we've taken on at the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and we're very excited about it. I'm uh, just going to tell you briefly a little bit about the program. Um, the Young Entrepreneurs Academy, or YAY, as we like to call it, uh, is a year-long after-school program that teaches middle school and high school age students how to start and run their own real business. Uh, YAY was developed at the University of Rochester uh, in 2004 with the support of the Kauffman Foundation and has graduated uh, around 1,400 students uh, in that 10 years who've launched over 1,000 businesses. Uh, we're very excited at the Chamber of Commerce to be one of the first communities in the state of Michigan to offer this program to the youth in our area. It's open to students in the Midland area, not just the Midland Public School students, uh, open to Bullet Creek, Meridian, uh, Coleman students, as well as homeschooled students. Uh, the majority of our students, however, are from the Midland Public Schools, from the middle school to high school, representing uh, Northeast, Jefferson, uh, Dow, and Midland High. Uh, our classes meet once a week at Northwood University. We're currently halfway through the program. Uh, through the course of the year, our students brainstorm business ideas. They do some market research. Uh, they write business plans with the help of mentors. Uh, they form partnerships. Some of our businesses have up to four partners uh, in their business, and some are sole proprietorships. 
Uh, they interact with business professionals who volunteer as instructors and guest speakers, uh, field trip hosts, and mentors. They meet with graphic designers and web designers. In fact, they just did that uh, in the last week or two, who develop logos and websites for our students. Um, they develop a presentation to pitch to businesses, or to, to pitch their business plan to potential investors, similar to Shark Tank, if anybody's familiar with that. Uh, that'll be coming up here next month. So tonight will be good practice for our students to kind of pitch their business to you. Uh, they obtain funding. Uh, they legally register their business uh, with the county clerk's office. Uh, they participate in a trade show, and they have a formal graduation at the end of the program. And they actually launch their own business for social movement at the end of the program. So our participants come into the, into the uh, program as students, and they graduate as legitimate CEOs of their very own legal, fully formed companies. We're fortunate to have several Midland Public Schools in our program this year, including some very talented students who are here tonight from Jefferson Middle School. Uh, these students have been working on their business plans uh, and their business ideas since October, and they're here today to share a little bit about their ventures with you. Uh, so if you students want to come up, and uh, you can introduce yourself <coughs> and your pitches. So uh, maybe we'll start with Matt. You can introduce yourself a little bit. Hi, I'm Matt Lamming. My business is Northern Woodland Spice. I create fresh new um, meat rubs that you can put on any meat and they my sort of motivation is to combat the sort of boundary that has been set like it's mainly sweet rubs spicy rubs but what about like lemon and um other different ones and so yeah it's my business <laughs> Hi, I'm Garrett Brohart, and um, I'm Colin Witt. Uh, we have a partnership with two other students, Adi Mitta and John White from Northeast. Our business is scent bands. We make scented silicone wristbands that basically are scented. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we, buy, we buy scents from a company called Southern Scentation, and then and just so, soak them in the oil. We plan to sell them to middle school and elementary students. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Jeremiah Drabic and I'm the oh, <laughs> oh good it works uh, I'm the owner of boxed out yo-yo entertainment and what I do is I have been yo-yoing for about two and a half years now and what I do is I choreograph my tricks to music and then I bring it to a birthday party kind of like someone might hire a clown or a magician um, but it's just a unique fresh take on, you know, a performer, and I actually recently just did my first performance at the DCTC Kids Night, and it was very well received there, so that's my business. There you go. Hi, I'm Riley Davis, <clears throat> I'm sorry, and my business is the Cupcake Garden, and my business partner is Paige Stockwell, but she goes to Meridian School, so... Um, we bake and sell cupcakes with hidden vegetables in them to get kids to eat their vegetables. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> and I got the idea while watching my si younger siblings refuse to eat their vegetables at the dinner table. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> and there's no artificial colors whatsoever in them. So. the other board first. How many students are involved? Uh, we currently have 23 students enrolled in the program. Okay. Are you planning to grow that or is that going to be kind of what, what you're shooting for? Well that's kind of what 24 is the maximum that we can take. Okay. Um, like I said it's our first year so we're hoping that the program will go, grow throughout the years. So, Great. Yeah. What's your best cupcake recipe? Um, <clears throat> your favorite? Probably the key lime pie. Oh, wow. with spinach in it, spinach oh, great. <laughs> Good to you. We did bring in some samples for the class to taste, and they actually were delicious. Good. There you go. Wow. Leonard, I was just 
it, amazing. I, it's exciting. I'd love to come and uh, visit and see what all your, your businesses are. Now, uh, my question is, once they start, then do they continue with the program then? Is that what my understanding is all yeah, They'll all graduate through? in May and they can continue their business um, as long as they want to afterwards. Okay, but as far as being involved with the program in the school, do they can do they continue through, or is this a one year? It's a one year, okay. thirty week long program. Yes, wow. and our investor panel pitch is March tw March twentieth. It'll be held at the Griswold Auditorium oh. at the University. Uh, so we Great. Would invite everybody to attend. We'd love to. And so, you don't have investors yet. You you get that as a function of this review they do. We do have we do have investors. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And they're the ones that will decide based on their presentation. No, no, oh, okay. Yes. They have not received their No, investment. not yet. That, that will happen in March. And okay. then after that, they March. decide what they do with their funds. That some will be overfunded, some might be underfunded, yep. so they'll have to change their business plan based on that. Wow. And how many students are there? There are 23 students 23. enrolled this year. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious with the students that they had a chance to interview CEOs, people that are actually yes. running businesses. Yes. And I'm just kind of curious what. Um, what did they learn and take home as far as the need for new and fresh entrepreneurs? I'm just kind of curious. Is there any that any of the students want to maybe share something that they learned? What you learned last week at the CEO roundtable? You had a chance to talk to <laughs> live CEOs, and is anything that I mean, is there a need? Is there a need for new businesses? Is uh, just kind of curious. I don't know about the need for new businesses thing, but. We learned from the CEOs that reputation is very important. Mm -hmm. When you're somewhere, if you're a member of a business, to most people, you are going to represent the whole business. So you have to be around other people. You have to be a good representative of what your business is. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Thank good you. Learning. Mm -hmm. yep. Thanks, Colin. So, yeah, a couple yeah. others had their hands up. All right, so I didn't learn anything about how um, the, what the need is, but I did learn that it's important for you to give back to your community through your business, not just keep it all to yourself like a um, Scrooge stingy person. <laughs> uh -huh. And sorry about the voice thing, I'm a little hoarse. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do well. Oh, <laughs> Um, I learned how to compete with other businesses is I learned that uh, price quality and service you have to pick two of them and you have to do, the, do those two well that's, that's very good that, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good learning. you can't do all things well you got to pick two and find out what market you're in yeah absolutely well the great thing about this program is there are people that own businesses that are coming in and talk to our students we've had an attorney we've had an accountant we've had uh, insurance agent marketing specialist uh, all sorts of business professionals that are coming in. We have mentors working one-on-one -on -one with the student groups, many of who are entrepreneurs themselves and business owners. So it's a real great interactive, uh, hands-on learning experience, and we're real excited about it. Hopefully our students are as well. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Very nice. and, and, Thank you. and thanks yeah, to the thank chamber you. for providing those yes. opportunities, and I know the middle school program um, and others, so it's very valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming thank out. You. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty neat partnerships there yeah. as well, wow. it's not only with the chamber, but the, you know, the, the members of the chamber that come in. So I want to quickly, uh, this will go on the wall for the board. And so and many of you know the Bridge Magazine, um, recognized with many schools. Uh, 52, I think, was the total. Top 10% in the state. The Midland Public Schools one of the, was one of those top 10%. And it uh, was very specific criteria and factored into there was also your poverty rate. And you had to achieve above that um, line in order to do well, which shows that we're doing. We often wonder how we're doing with that group of students, but it appears uh, to the rest of the state anyway that we are outperforming the majority of the state. So but this plaque will go in uh, somewhere in the board office and give yes. it to Jerry. So. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mike. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations to all our folks for this. Uh, there's a lot of people putting a lot of effort out in the buildings <coughs> to make this happen. And, uh, you know, we're we're learning and getting better at understanding what we have to do with uh, our at-risk population. And I think in the past we reveled in our averages. And our averages are very high and we've learned there's a distribution curve to performance. Mm -hmm. And how do we bring the average up by bringing the bottom up? And uh, this is very heartening to say at least we got a good foundation to start from. 
and as we as we move forward only get even better so thank you everybody out there for our buildings our teachers our paras everybody for uh helping make this happen also for your information um we have um, you as you well know we have used seven um school days at this point so <laughs> we are one over those that can be forgiven and so um we have uh, put together a plan along with our teacher association of when that would make sense to make that one up um, if we wait too long into the year, that time period to make those up are gone, and we have an open date coming where we're doing professional development on March the 10th, and the teachers will vote on that tomorrow um, as well. But we will have the school's students in that day for uh, an instructional day instead of a professional development day. Um, some of the time that the teachers need it were made up because, if you recall, one of the power days, we did have them report and do PD at that time. So, Thank you. We also have a letter from the Teachers Association. Um, um, a belated uh, school board recognition month was last month, but they, are, they have sent this in, and I'll quickly read what they have written to the board. In honor of School Board Appreciation Month, the Midland City Education Association would like to make a donation of $100 to each of the Midland High School newspapers for a total donation of $200. The Midland High focused, the Dow High update are strong examples of the quality program Midland Public School offers. The journalism classes offer an authentic opportunity for students to write. Through these classes, students learn how to research information, to craft that information into engaging and relevant articles, and to produce and distribute a reader-friendly product. In addition, these award-winning newspapers represent Midland Public Schools well in the state competition for student newspapers. The focus and the update are truly assets to Midland Public Schools, and therefore have been chosen to receive the $200 donation from MCA in honor of the MPS School Board. Thank you very, very much. Nice. I like their, I like the donation direction also. Yes. The papers. This is very good. Very kind of followed the book going into the schools as yep. well, so I think that was good. Yep. Um, the last one I have is an administrative appointment, and so um, as you know, we accepted Bonnie Westervelt's re um, retirement or resignation last month, and so this month we are uh, appointing our new principal at East Lawn Elementary School, and the recommendation has come, has come from the administrative staff that Ms. Shannon Blasey be appointed to that position as of June 30 of next year. And so I think Shannon is here. There she is. If you'd like to come up, Shannon. If you want to say a few words, Shannon. While she's working on that, I, I have you note um, a little bit of Shannon's background as well. And, and you may or may not know this, Shannon is a graduate of Midland Public Schools. So <laughs> that's, I think, is an honor in itself. I kind of did that in my previous district, so I always thought that was kind of special in itself, picking that up. And uh, make sure I get all this right, Shannon. You. Um, Shannon taught at Central, or was an assistant principal at Central Middle School mm -hmm. prior to being assistant principal at East Lawn as well. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I'll let you go ahead and speak. Okay. Well, um, good evening. <coughs> and um, I just have to thank you all so much for this uh, appointment. Um, I'm very proud to be the next principal of East Lawn Elementary. Um, there's several great initiatives already um, in place and systems in place to help the students succeed at East Lawn and um, I look forward to continuing those and of course working on the challenges side by side with the staff members on uh, meeting new challenges that come ahead um, I uh, I want to say a couple of words to um, mr. Poole and also Ms. Westervelt they both have just guided me fantastic um, in a fantastic direction um, in administration they've really let me kind of fly when I need to fly and um, dig in when I needed to dig in and I learned quite a lot um, along the way and uh, uh, very excited to um, continue digging in on all the different things that we have to look forward to in the future with East Lawn. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much. Congratulations. 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 a lot of good things out of East Lawn the last couple of years and uh, I'm glad you're still there. Thank you. That's it for me. Okay. Um, <coughs> the um, boiler retubing project, anybody want to speak to us about that? 
you'd like, since you are filling in for Linda, Linda is gone today, yes. so Bob's going to fill in for most of her spots. All right, uh, we have uh, bids have been accepted and tabulation provided for Woodcrest Elementary boiler retubing project. Uh, the project involves or includes removing and replacing the boiler tubes and the hydro testing the boiler. Uh, the administration is recommending issuing a purchase order to the low bidder, uh, Monarch Welding and Engineering of Bay City, and the amount of $5,000. $359. And the FFO committee has discussed that previously about the need to use sinking fund money to complete this project back at their November meeting. Okay, I'll accept the motion in a second. We can go to questions and comments. To a motion? Move approval of the accepting the bid uh, okay. for the Woodcrest boiler repair uh, item 4.8 in the agenda. I second it. Moved by Treasurer Kaminsky, seconded by Member Singer. Any questions or comments? I'm glad this boiler was only five thousand dollars. That's the one I'll say with our <laughs> limited sinking fund that's still left. So, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> the ayes have it. Cool. And I guess we're moving into curriculum. Right. And uh, first thing we have on the agenda <coughs> is Lynn with a uh, curriculum study committee minutes. Yes, we actually, <coughs> excuse me, met on January 27th at Eastlawn Elementary, which was um, a pleasure. We started out with uh, talking about our meeting times in the future with new board members on the, the uh, Curriculum Instruction Assessment Study Committee. It's a new name, so it's taking me a while to, to get that one. Different meeting times were discussed. The 1.45 until 3 p.m. time frame works best at this time. The CIA committee will move to setting meeting dates and times on a January to January time frame to match the board election and reorganizational meeting in January. Next, we talked about the community school model. Bonnie Westerfeld had the community school team members introduce themselves and describe their role at the school. Shannon Blazy and Chris Corbett led the presentation on how the community school model works at Eason Elementary. They provided data on truancy attendance, both before implementing the model and after. Eastlawn has seen more than a 40% reduction in truancy, including a perfect attendance day. Attendance and follow-up protocol was discussed in detail. The family interventionists described their duties, incentives offered, and programs they had run or were being planned for students and their families. Team members from outside agencies described their role and how they contribute to the community school model. The school nurse's role was briefly discussed. East Lawn is waiting patiently to see this year's MEEP scores to see the effect the model is having on student achievement. A question and answer session followed the presentation. And it was, it was a pleasure to be at East Lawn and uh, to see all the wonderful, great programs and effort that they are putting into their community school model and how many people are involved. And uh, it, will be, it will be interesting to see the, the effect when it's, the year is up. Um, then we talked about the remaining meetings, and uh, these minutes are available out in the hall. Thank you. Any question or comment, Delaney? Seeing none, we'll move into FFO, and we have a committee report from our treasurer. Yes. Okay, we met on February 3rd, um, and uh, we uh, had Ms. Locks present the December financial reports. Uh, unlike prior years, expenses are at rather, um, rather than below Expenses are at, rather than below, projections for the year. Uh, Ms. Klein showed how medical costs are running higher than in prior years and how they affect the overall projections. Uh, the financial reports will be included on the February 10th agenda for approval. Uh, other items that will appear on the February 10th agenda are a fueling agreement we went over, um, uh, renewal of the second year of audit contract with EO and EO, a resolution authorizing the superintendent to work with Chemical Bank, which we covered. Uh, Ms. Klein shared a draft of a revision to district reimbursement guidelines. On March 1st, the guidelines will replace the current version, which has been in place since 2004. The new guidelines incorporate meal limits established by the United States General Service Administration. Public Act 106 of 2007 requires periodic bidding of employee benefit plans. MPS plans to work with McGraw Wentworth on ensuring that we are in compliance with this requirement. Beginning June uh, 30th, 2015, something called GASB 68 will require us to um, have a new line item on our financial statements. 
Uh, this new line item relates to the estimation of the district share of unfunded pension liability for the Michigan, uh, or MIS, as we know as uh, MISPERS, um, which is the Michigan Public School and Employee Retirement System. Uh, it's a requirement of GASB um, to have this as a line item, and as a result, government-wide government financial statements for every district which participates in MISPERS will likely show a negative net position. Uh, the general fund fund equity is not affected. Uh, Mr. Shaw reported that eight architectural firms responded, responded to our request for uh, proposal. He, Ms. Klein, and Mr. Wasserman will narrow the list to two or three and then invite the finalists to make a presentation to the FFO uh, committee. Since it is unlikely that the architectural study will uh, indicate a future use for the former Mills Elementary, administration will investigate steps uh, necessary to place the building up for sale. Ms. Klein, describe the work that Mr. Magenberger is doing on the development of a district-wide energy plan. Uh, the FFO committee will review a plan of that, uh, draft of that plan at a future meeting. Uh, Ms. Klein informed the committee that the governor's proposed budget is scheduled for release on February 5th, which is uh, very much uh, awaited and uh, being watched. Uh, the rumor is that uh, there's an $83 increase uh, in the foundation allowance um, to cover the increased MISPERS rate. Uh, when Ms. Klein prepares a mid-year budget adjustment, she'll also prepare a preliminary forecast for 2014-15, taking into account all the information known to date. Our next meeting will be Monday, March 17th. Any questions or comments <coughs> of the Treasurer? I have one comment. I, I, I think Caspi's fascinating that they put the retirement liability on the district. I won't argue if that's good or bad, but why don't we get the retirement assets on our balance sheet also? <laughs> <laughs> so that said, I, just, I, don't, I don't quite understand a balance sheet that just puts a liability on instead of an ad, also its assets, but we've got to live with it. Yeah. With that, I'll turn it over. We have a list for you tonight of 13 <laughs> gifts, which total $13,232.06. They've been received in process. You'll see they range. Uh, we have gifts from the East Lawn Elementary Student Supplement the Education Endowment Fund. Uh, there's actually three of those for science fair, uh, a field trip, and also some professional development of books. The East Lawn Elementary PTO uh, gave a gift for library books. Uh, the Boosters Club at Dow High School uh, for athletics. Northeast Music Parents, Tiffany, gave for music. Um, the Midland Area Community Foundation, a couple of words, one to Jefferson, one to the district, one for nonviolent uh, week activities, and the other for snow sculpture events. Um, we have uh, an award from the Michigan uh, Section of American Water Works Association, uh, the Science Olympiad team at Jefferson, um, the Midland Youth Violence Prevention Partnership at the Community Foundation, Dave the Carpenter for an anti-bullying program, and then we have <coughs> three, one to Dow High and two to Middle High for athletics from Dow Chemical Community Gives Fund. Uh, appropriate thanks to the donors is recommended. Thank you. Thanks to the donors again and again. Very nice. Okay, we're going to move into human resources, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Verlindi. Thank you. We have four former staff members uh, who have recently deceased. Elsa Mae Hancock uh, passed away January 20th. She was a school aide at Mapleton for 14 years until 1981. Paul Gatrell, who taught math in the high school for 37 years. Victoria Ann Rock, who passed away on September 20th, supervising secretary down here at the Minnesota Public Schools for 18 years, retiring in 1988, and Ann Moe passed away February 4th. She was lead secretary for the Minnesota Public Schools for 37 years, retiring in 1993. Pass along our condolences to the families of those four, four former staff members. And uh, Following staff members have announced their retirement, effective as of the date indicated. On June 30th, Linda Klein, Associate Superintendent. Um, uh, for February 11th, effective for Nancy Cussman, paraprofessional at Jefferson. And then for June 13th, for the next four, Darla Iaquinta, teacher with the music department. Sally Paulus, teacher with the physical education department. Joanne Tickner, speech pathologist with special services and Kelly Wilson, a teacher with the art department. And we thank them for their service. The first one's denied. 
Yeah. She'd be blushing. <laughs> I think it was a 10 year advance notice. <laughs> yeah. I didn't look back at previous uh, minutes and I didn't see it. <laughs> well, you can tell her mindset is because she usually, if, uh, if she misses, she plans to prepare one of us for her part tonight. Both Bob and I looked at each other and said she didn't say anything to either one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Started a little early. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, the rest of the agenda shows some letters have gone to into the district, and you'll see our future uh, calendar that we just did last meeting, mm -hmm. uh, which is a more monthly centric. And uh, that turns it over to study discussion for board members, and I'll start to my right with Lynn. Ooh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Well, first of all, just looking at this list of retirement, this has never happened before, but three of those teachers, my, my children had at Chestnut Hill, and I just think, wow, that's a, that's a big void there all of a sudden, and uh, also makes me feel, wow, I must be getting to a certain stage in life, too, when three of the kids' teachers are retiring. So I wish, I wish all of them well. That's well-deserved, and, and I know they'll enjoy their, their time. Um, Let's see, lots, I had several notes jotted here. To the MCEA, thank you for the, the donation in our honor. We tonight again have a copy of the update in the focus and I always look forward to taking those home and, and reading those. I find a wealth of information and even when my, my children were in, in high school, I found out more about what was going on through their school newspapers than I did in any other any form. So they do a marvelous job. Uh, I delivered the book that uh, was donated. The uh, Day the Crans quit the other day to Chestnut Hill, and I didn't realize what a popular book this <coughs> is. The uh, media specialist, Becky, told me she had just ordered one. It has won all kinds of accolades and awards. So once again, I say I thank you. It was a very nice gesture, and I know many students are going to enjoy it. Went home and read it, and I just I laughed, and I marveled at, at the creativity of that book. Uh, congratulations to the Dow High and Midland High Palm teams. I know they were at st the state competition. I don't know how they did. I couldn't find it, but I know they had a great weekend. Um, I know Midland High School's drama, Yellow Boat, has done well, and they will be going on to perform. Then I pulled a couple articles out of the paper just uh, recently. The Siebert students collected shoes for Guatemala, and also the nice article on uh, the carpenter staff and their mentors, the, ni the nice program they did the other night. We, they do marvelous uh, programs over there just as we do in all our schools and we talked about East Lawn tonight and that mentorship program is, is pretty amazing at Carpenter. So thank you to all involved and just another congratulations to um, Deanna and uh, Steve tonight on the Shining Stars, our jump ropers. Wow, our, our young entrepreneurs, I'm thinking, not only their, their projects, but the poise they showed tonight. That, that age of student, there is no way when I was that age that I could have been that comfortable speaking in front of a board. So not only are they learning about uh, business, but wonderful life skills. So, And I think that's all for tonight. I know people have a nice long weekend coming up, and I hope they enjoy that. John. OK, we're good. We have to get used to having fewer board meetings on the schedule, and now we're going to kind of get a longer list of things, so I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, and Mr. Shaw, I appreciate the change in dynamic to our board meetings. We have students here performing. We have presentations about what's going on in schools. Mr. Penix, Mr. Pohl, thanks for bringing your students out and uh, sharing what they do. It really is neat to see that part, because as uh, Lynn had mentioned, the newspapers give us a lot of good information. Of course, our parents have kids in the district, or have had them. But uh, I learn a lot from our, our board meetings now. And I'm learning about our shining stars and the backgrounds of the people. And just amazing the, uh, the talent and the background and what they do. And it's, it really is, is uh, I think, has uh, engaged um, a lot of our staff. And it, it's really been, uh, I think, worked out very well for the few months we've had it. Um, just a reminder about the millage enhancement renewal that's coming up. Um, I'm hearing that, um, that the word is getting out. I think the flexibility of this millage is probably the key part of it. Uh, and as a renewal, it doesn't change tax, so we, we're looking forward to the public supporting us coming up here in just a few weeks. Um, I know Booster Bash is coming up. I know uh, I, I walked in the community center for a basketball game, and I'm seeing the, the picture mm -hmm. there, and it's, I know we're getting some of the, the press out there. I think it's coming up in a, about a month. 
or so. So, um, and I know some of the organizers for that, and I'm looking forward to being there. It's it's really is a great. I think they change it up a little bit, but I think it's a it's off to a great start. Um, and the, the sponsors in the community, uh, you know, the idea of that is that you hit up or talk to our sponsors once a year instead of having them have the phone ringing all the time. It allows to have a coordinated effort. It does um, it does limit the uh, the amount of uh, I guess wearing out of our going to the well too many times. Um, and then I have a box of chocolates here from uh, Heather and Holly. This is really nice. Um, I don't know if I'm going to eat them. Maybe my kids will get them. But we did get a nice gift uh, and a letter <coughs> of appreciation from the MCA, uh, our teachers organization. It really is a nice heartfelt um, reaching out and uh, thanking board members as well as what we did. Our last board meeting too was really neat. Uh, the book and the from the students, I still have that. And uh, it really is a nice touch. So I'll go on to um, our yeah. next person. Yep. Well, I uh, just wanted to say this is, I think this has been one of the most uplifting, most inspiring board meetings in a long time. I just thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I really did. We, you know, we always, often get a lot of bad news, but um, tonight this was all good news, so it was great. I, like John, I really enjoy the Shining Stars program. I think that's great to highlight people in their great service, because we do have so many wonderful employees who really do give so much great service, so it helps me learn to know more of them, too. And I just cannot get past this community school model. I, I think this is just incredible. East Lawn has seen more than a 40% reduction in truancy. Isn't that amazing? Including a perfect attendance day. How often does that happen? I think that is really amazing. I'm just so really happy with that. And of course, it was great to see our young jumpers. Aren't they great? <laughs> and the uh, Entrepreneurs Academy, wow. That, I think that is just one of the neatest things to really encourage these kids with their great ideas and the things they come up with, they're, they're just amazing to me. And then lastly, I'd like to say congratulations to Shannon Blazy on a well-deserved promotion. That'll be great. Um, thanks to the MCEA. And also I need to remind everyone that the Gerstacker Teacher Proficiency <laughs> Awards nomination window is open now until March 7. So I'll give that some thought. And um, thank you. Very good. <coughs> um, it's a big week. It's Midland Dow Week. We got Spirit Week going on at both high schools. So excited about some basketball games and hockey games and all that's going on there. Uh, was also excited to hear we had four students from Midland High participate in a Brain Bee at Central Michigan University. And one student, Maddie Hayes, won. The competition will be going on to national. So that's great, great news. Um, last week, I participated in two MASB classes. One was legislative process and the other community relations. And I appreciate the opportunity to uh, further my education uh, for board matters. So Keep plugging. They're very valuable. Yes, they are. There you go. And that's all I have. Um, congratulations to Steve and Diana. Um, and uh, Diana, if you're watching, uh, I'm going to talk about Steve for a minute only because I have a, a relationship with him through my son in music. And uh, I'll always appreciate what Steve and his wife did with him in music. And that uh, it really meant a lot in his life as he was growing up. And uh, Steve's efforts with us is just compounded a thousand X through the years with everybody else. So I just wanted to point that out. And uh, I, I love the entrepreneur thing. You know, one of our high schools is named after one of the country's top entrepreneurs back 100 years ago, named H.H. H. Dow. So it's good to see that uh, we're getting the programs with our community to start inculcating that thought process. And uh, I just remember Ronald Reagan saying, you know, the best, the best welfare program is a job. And jobs come from entrepreneurs and people who take risks to create businesses and do things. So it's great that we're showing our kids that that's the way to solve things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just really appreciate that. And again, uh, to the MCA and Vi, thank you very much for the recognition. Um, I too am on a diet, but I'm allowed one sin day every week, so these may all disappear next Sunday. <laughs> 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 and so I really do truly appreciate that. It's hard to and, put that uh, off that long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. That's going to be the hard part. It's a week from now. <laughs> and uh, I'd also like uh, a shout out to the MCA for all their efforts they're helping with the renewal. Uh, it, it's great that we're working together on that, and uh, I really, really appreciate that. And then lastly, and, and people pointed out, speaking of renewal, February 25th, folks, uh, it's, our, uh, it's our enhancement millage. It's three plus million dollars to us. Uh, 
not going to be fun if we don't have that money. It's already deficit spending. It'll just make it really bad. And so I uh, just hope people will go out and vote positively and uh, hope we've shown we've been stewards of money and performing. There's the performance, one of them, big one for all of our students, not yeah. just top students. And uh, hope we can see your support on February 25th. And for me, I have um, remind you that we shared those MEEP scores kind of with you, but they're still embargoed out there. And so uh, the, the point being that um, staff is busy um, digesting that data, aligning our curriculum, aligning our instruction to continually improve on those. And so that's why they do re release it early and embargo it for a while so we can get rolling on that piece of it. Um, the architects, so we're down to two, Jerry. So it was three, we moved to two. And so we have two coming to the FFO on uh, February 26th. And from there, the FFO will make a recommendation to the full board on those architectural firms. We had eight submit from off the RFP. Um, and uh, Linda, Jerry, and I did a lot of reading last week, <laughs> trying to figure out uh, one proposal from the other. So when it got down to the end, it was pretty tough. Eight. So we're bringing a couple forward to, to you. And we've covered all, everything else that I had written here tonight, so I will leave it from there, and that's all I have. Okay. So if there's nothing else, we are adjourned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming out, folks. Yeah, thanks for coming.